This is the fifth Honeywell pneumatic training video. It will start with some basic material, then look at each of the most important pneumatic relays and finish with applications using them. Pneumatic relays compare, select, adjust, or convert air pressures in pneumatic systems. They are used in combination with controllers and actuators to carry out logic requirements of HVC systems. There are many types of pneumatic relays used in pneumatic systems. Many require a main supply error because they produce a higher output pressure than the input pilot signal given to them, or they are a bleed type device like a thermostat that needs a constant supply of air to function. I'll discuss the operation and application of these pneumatic relays in this training. The ports in pneumatic devices are labeled following this convention. The main air is always labeled with a one and branch line is labeled with a two. Ports labeled 3 and 5 are either inputs or pilot signal outputs. Here you can see how port 3 signals the damper actuator to fully open a damper when the fan is running. Other nomenclature that you will commonly see is M for main air and B for branch line air. You will see these designations on the drawings in the following slides and in the installation instructions. A common relay is an electric to pneumatic relay. It's often referred to as an EP. It's an electrically operated solenoid connected to a three-way air valve with a common port and a normally open and a normally closed port. When the solenoid is energized, the plunger moves the air valve to be open from the common port to the B port. When it's de-energized, a spring holds the valve open from the common port to the A port. The valve is often used as a pneumatic on-off valve controlled by either 24 volts or a line volt electric signal. It might be wired to a fan starter so that when the fan is on, the valve delivers air pressure to a damper. In this example, the damper will open when the fan is running and close when the fan shuts off. EPs can be used as diverting valves, such as when dual PRVs are used, as seen in the Pneumatix 4 video on two temperature thermostats. Another form of an electric to pneumatic relay is the E to P transducer. This device receives a 2 to 10 proportional electric signal and outputs a matching proportional pneumatic air signal. In this example, a DDC panel is controlling the damper actuator via the pneumatic transducer. The DDC system sends a 2 to 10 volt DC control signal to the transducer, which is connected to a pneumatic damper, so it opens proportionally with the 2 to 10 volt signal. This type of application is often referred to as a hybrid system. The RP7517 requires 18 PSI to operate, it must be installed vertically. Another useful electric interface is the pneumatic to electric relay, commonly referred to as a PE relay. Inside, it has a bellows that is operated by a pneumatic pressure signal. The bellow moves to make or break electric contacts. PE relays are used to control electric devices using pneumatic control logic. The relay has an adjustable set point and can be set to make or break contacts at any desired pressure. They can be used for on-off control of fans and pumps, energizing electric heaters, day-night control of unitary equipment, interlock functions, and control of other electrical equipment in mechanical systems. In this example, a room thermostat's branch line pressure is switching two fans in sequence. The first fan starts with a rise in branch pressure at 7 psi, and the second fan starts at 12 psi. The fans will then shut off with drop in pressure at 5 and 10 psi. This same controller's branch line could tee off to a damper or valve, creating control logic involving all functions of HVAC equipment. Please note that throughout this video, any depiction of a thermostat could also mean any type of pneumatic controller. Select your relays, compare pneumatic signals, and select the higher or lower input. They have three ports. The RP470A has two inputs marked 3 and 5. These two inputs are compared and one outlet marked with a 2. The input that is the highest is allowed to pass through to the outlet. The RP470B selects the lower of two pressures. Ports 2 and 5 are the inputs and port 3 is the output. The RP470B can also lock out one pressure signal when a second signal is higher. In this example, two RP470As are used to select the signal from the thermostat calling for the most cooling. That stat will then control the cooling valve. 
Another selector relay is the RP913A load analyzer. It selects the highest or lowest branch pressure input from zone thermostats. It will select the highest pressure demand in cooling applications or the lowest pressure demand in heating from up to seven thermostats and pass this signal on to the heating or cooling device. Two load analyzers can be connected together to get 12 inputs. There's no calibration needed on the RP913. The only service necessary is an air filter. If the output pressure is more than one PSI below the input, the filter should be replaced with a clean new one. It uses the same filter as used on the thermostats, like the TP970. In this example, the coldest zone with the lowest pressure from a direct etching thermostat modulates a normally open heating valve. And the warmest zone with the highest pressure from a direct acting thermostat modulates a normally closed cooling valve. Averaging relays are used to average two pneumatic pressure signals. There are three ports on the RP973. The two inputs are 3 and 5, and the average output is port 2. The RP973A can be used to average two LP914 sensor signals to obtain an average temperature. RP670A and B are two-position relays. Pilot pressure signals the relay to direct air to one circuit or another, so they provide control logic decisions by turning on and off or diverting pneumatic signals. The relay's decision to make or break is based on a high-low pilot pressure at port 3. The pilot pressure that trips the relay is factory set to coincide with the day-night or heat-cool switching pressures. The common relay port is port 7. The normally connected port is number 6, and the normally disconnected port is number 8. RP670A has one single-pole double-pole relay and is all gray. RP670B has two relays. One single-pole double-pole relay is gray, and the other one is black. In this example, the discharge low limit is disabled during the cooling mode. At 13 PSI supply air, the thermostat is in the cooling mode, and the RP670A switch has port 7 connected to port 6, disabling the heating low limit controller. At 18 PSI supply air, the thermostat is in the heating mode, and the RP670A switch has port 7 connected to port 8 enabling the heating low limit controller. These switching relays are often called summer winter switches or heating cooling switches for obvious reasons. They switch with dual main air pressures used to switch two temperature thermostats. The RP471 is a switching relay that is similar to the last one. Just like the RP670A, it has one single pole double throw relay. The difference is that it has an adjustable set point. It will switch ports at a specific pressure, providing an additional level of control switching logic. The switching set point is adjustable between 3 and 15 PSI, with about a half PSI differential. Just like the RP670, port 3 is the pilot port and 7 is the common port, with 6 and 7 being the switched ports. In this example, the switch is interrupting the thermostat branch line going to a heating valve, disabling the valve when the outdoor temperature is warm, and additionally, applying full main air to hold the valve closed. A reversing relay does just that. It reverses a pneumatic air signal. This relay might be used to reverse a branch line signal when the actuator's action is out of sync with the rest of the control logic. Or it can be used to reverse any pneumatic pressure signal, such as sensors, controllers, or another relay's output. Port 1 is for main supply air, and port 3 is the pilot signal from the branch line that needs to be reversed. Port 2 is the output with the reversed signal, and port 4 is the exhaust. There are three pressure settings. The factory default is position B. In this setting, the RP972 will reverse a 3 to 13 signal. This is the most common setting for this relay. Be careful to ensure that the switch is fully clicked into the desired setting for correct operation. In this example, a VAV box has a normally closed damper and a normally closed reheat valve. As the room temperature decreases, the direct acting thermostat closes the damper to a minimum position. That's good. On a further drop in room temperature, the reheat valve should open. But it's a normally closed valve, so a decreasing pressure would close it. That's not what we want. So, a reversing relay is used to reverse the branch line pressure to open the reheat valve 
on a drop in pressure. The capacity relay has several applications. It's often used to strengthen a signal over a long tubing run or to assist a controller in the filling of a large actuator or bank of actuators from a single controller output. This relay can also be used to repeat a signal or to isolate a signal from a pneumatic circuit. The number three port is connected to the pilot circuit that triggers the relay. Port one goes to the main air supply and port two is the strengthened relayed signal that goes to the damper or whatever. In this example, port three is connected to a branch line from a thermostat to a damper, and port two is connected to the damper at the end of a long run. The RP971A ratio relay, or sequency relay as it's often called, produces a modulating pressure output in proportion to the pilot pressure input. In a typical application, two or three relays are used to control valve or damper actuators in sequence from a single controller. The RP971 has a set point ring. This is set to the start pressure. As the input pressure rises 3 psi above the start pressure, the output will increase from 3 up to 13 psi. So the output will span the normal 3 to 13 psi, but the input will span only 3 psi above the start pressure. There is also a version of the RP971 that has a 5 psi input span. The pilot port going to the branch line is marked with a 3 and is on the front. On the back, main air supply goes to port 1, and the branch output going to the actuator is port 2. In this application, three dampers are staged to open. Three RP971 are used, and each one of them has three PSI spans. The first sequencing relay is set to three PSI. So as the branch line from the thermostat rises from three to six PSI, it will send a three to 13 signal to its damper. Then as the branch line from the thermostat rises from six to nine PSI, the second sequencing relay will open its damper with a three to 13 PSI signal. The third sequencing relay then operates as the branch line increases from 9 to 12 psi. The SB970A sends a certain pressure to a damper actuator to hold a minimum position. When the signal from the controller rises above that pressure, it will pass the pressure onto the damper. It is piped to the controller on port 4, to main air supply on port 1, and to the damper on port 2. As piped in this example, the SB970 will hold the damper at a minimum position, as set on the switch. As the controller's branch signal rises above this setting, the switch will pass the controller's branch pressure to the damper, so the damper will open and modulate like normal. But when the controller's branch signal falls below that setting, it will go back to keeping the damper at a minimum position for fresh air. The SP470 is a two or three position switch that can be used for on-off air control or diverting of pneumatic signals. With a three position switch in position one, port seven connects to port nine. In position two, port seven connects to port eight. Note the other two ports are blocked. In position three, port seven connects to six. In this example, a three position switch is connected to a normally open valve and a direct acting thermostat. With the switch in position one, port seven connects to port nine, and the actuator exhausts so the normally open valve goes to full open. In position two, port seven connects to port eight, and the valve is under thermostat control. In position three, port seven connects to six, and the main air is applied to the valve, holding it closed. Although not classified as a relay, the CP980 Velocitrol is an air velocity sensor with a pneumatic controller used to control airflow in VAV boxes. There are direct acting and reverse acting models. Here it is used with a room thermostat to control CFM through a VAV box, providing pressure independent air control. It is also used in a variety of other airflow control applications. Next, I will show you some applications using Honeywell pneumatic relays. Some of the examples use the TP972 summer winter thermostat. Summer winter thermostats are needed when the same valve and coil is used for cooling in the summer and heating in the winter. In the winter, the thermostat is reverse acting for heat, but in the summer, it switches to direct acting for cooling. Now let's use this stat in some pneumatic relay applications. 
Here's a valve and coil in a fan coil unit that heats in the winter and cools in the summer. It will only do heating in winter because it's only supplied with hot water. And in summer, the valve will only do cooling because then it's only supplied with chilled water. But occasionally there's a call for heat in the summer, so an electric heat strip needs to run for comfort. But because the electric heat is more expensive than hot water, the electric strip heater is not allowed in the winter. Here's how it works. In the winter, the main supply air is at 18 psi. This puts the thermostat in the heating mode, so it's reverse acting. The RP670 summer winter switching relay is also in the winter mode for the same reason. And port 6 is blocked. With no air pressure signal going from the RP670 to the P658PE switch, the electric heat is prevented from operating, and only the hot water valve modulates to heat the rooms. In the summer, the main air supply is at 13 psi. This puts the thermostat in the cooling mode. It's direct acting, and the valve modulates to cool the rooms. The RP670 summer winter relay now connects port 6 to 7, so the branch air passes to the P658PE switch. If the room cools down, the electric heat panel can now provide warmth. No heat is possible from the coil because it's full of chilled water all summer. Here's a control sequence that's a little more involved. In this case, the thermostat controls the VAV year-round for cooling with reheat should the room temperature ever drop low enough. The thermostat also controls a fan coil with a combo coil. That's hot water in winter and chilled water in the summer. Additionally, there's an electric heat strip that is only active in the summer if the rooms get chilly. Now let's see how to do this. First, let's break this down into individual control loops. The single temperature TP970 controls the VAV box year-round. This thermostat also controls a three-way fan coil valve year-round, where a drop in pressure allows flow into the coil. We will connect this valve to the stat with a summer-winter switching relay for reasons that we'll soon see. Notice the direct acting thermostat allows flow of hot water to the fan coil in winter on a drop in temperature, just as it should. But we need to reverse this valve action in the summer so a rise in temperature creates flow of chilled water. We cannot change this action of the thermostat because it needs to remain direct acting for the VAV box. So we'll reverse this signal with a reversing relay, but only in the summer. Next, we now need to bring on electric heat during the summer mode. To do this, we'll connect the PE switch through the summer-winter switching relay so it only operates when we're in the cooling mode. That's it. As you see, pneumatic relays make it possible to solve complicated control logic scenarios. This concludes Pneumatics 5, Relays. You can find more information on Honeywell's pneumatic controls at customer.honeywell.com. Here you'll find information and literature such as the Pneumatics Control Manual and the Honeywell Pneumatic Relays and Switches Manual.